everything matters and it's all a reflection. How worthy do you really believe you are of joy, love, happiness and abundance? Girls gotta eat. Welcome back. The way you roasted this outfit. <laughs> oh my god. What? It's just jean shorts and sweatshirts. It's booty shorts and Air Force Ones. <laughs> you're about to be in like a City Girls video. <laughs> like, like your backup dancer. These are a little tight. <laughs> oh, excuse us, Azul. It's just, I don't see you wear Daisy Dukes and Air Force Ones a lot. It's I don't know if I've me. ever seen it. It's not what is I the vibe? Here. You're like, are you going to a barbecue? I like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Tessa looks so good today, so I want to step it up too. It's the best outfit. <laughs> it is really cute. It's such a vibe. I know. I noticed her dress on the Zoom call. She's wearing like a checkered, like spaghetti strap dress. And then she walked in with like the Mary Janes, and I was like, work. And the socks. Yeah. Remember when you told Tessa you were like, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you go, I love this slutty dress you're wearing. And she was like, what? <laughs> she was like, I used to wear this to my old job. <laughs> this was a work dress. And Rainer was like, oh, no, totally go off. <laughs> <laughs> with a jacket it would have been like it's not it wasn't slutty I mean it was hot you can make great. comments about what you wear is that weird I'm such a stan of you Tessa well no I think it's nice to like compliment people's <laughs> outfits well, the one time I had asked her she was happy she gets to wear bra tops to work <laughs> <laughs> you really are a vibe Tessa you're a fashion icon yeah I'm wearing booty um, shorts to record don't listen to me <laughs> I'm trying to think of what you do look like it's like 90s music video backup dancer really? like the little sh jean shorts with sneakers and like a hoodie thank you <laughs> I used to I mean I usually would wear like a low top sneaker but they're upstairs and my thighs have gotten a little thick since uh, embracing pelotoning so these didn't used to be Daisy Dukes <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that's a term do you know that term Tessa Daisy Dukes okay look at them girls with the Daisy Dukes on everybody <laughs> I just thought it was from the movie the Dukes of Hazard. yeah that's where it came from. But it's also like a song. I don't know that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take some partners. Right in the video. She doesn't even. <laughs> Actually, if we can wrap number this up, one I got a good video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll thank some of our partners. Thanks to ZocDoc for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who take your insurance and are available when you need them. Go to ZocDoc.com slash GGE and download the ZocDoc app to sign up for free and book a top rated doctor. And we'd like to thank Nutrafol for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve visible thickness and strength. Go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code GGE to save $10 off your first month subscription plus free shipping on every order. Yes, and thank you to EarthBreeze, Laundry Detergent, Eco Sheets for supporting our show. Go to earthbreeze.com slash GGE to get 40% off when you subscribe. And thanks to Pretty Litter for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Pretty Litter ships free to your door in a small, lightweight bag. Pretty Litter can help eliminate cat box stink in your house. Make the switch today. Go to prettylitter.com slash GGE and use code GGE to save 20% on your first order. Raina, where were we when you were like... <laughs> When you said, like, my hand stinks. We were with Ryan in the car. <laughs> we were driving And it was, DC. like, so gross I said, to me. my fingers smell. <laughs> I didn't say my hand stinks. I said, my fingers smell. And everyone and was like, he was Ooh. like, which hand is it? And I was like, the hand. Oh my god! I don't remember why it smelled. It did smell. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Know. I just remembered it because I actually think. Well, my hand smells like cheese because that's all you're letting me eat at this house. Okay, Raina lured me over here. I had to, to come work, over to do our job. Well, <laughs> you lured me over here foodless. I came over without my lunch because you were like, "Come eat all this food I have left over from my birthday party." We'll talk about it. And then I get over here. Mm -hmm. Three things I pulled out of the fridge. I thought, I, was, stuff. I thought I was going to have free reign of the fridge. Mm -hmm. I opened the doors. I'm getting in. so juiced up to like make a spread. Everything I pulled out. No, juiced not that. She ate cauliflower. No, not that. <laughs> no, not that. You can't have that either. Nope. That's something Kate bought. I nope. put in the text. I said, I would like you guys to shop the fridge. I have cheese, wine, and donuts. I said what, what I wanted you guys to take. So, Literally not what I eat midday. That's what I would like you to take. Crispy creams. Take it home to Kate. Make a little picnic together for dinner. You'll have some Kimmy Sauvignon Blanc. 
I mean, I'll take the wine, but it was just funny that you were like, come over and raid this fridge, bitches. And then I just <laughs> came over and everything. I put a carrot in my mouth. She was like, stop it. Don't eat the vegetables. And I was like, okay, I'll grab this feta dip, which like, feta is cheese. I was like, I use it. Nope. I was like, not that's that what I either. want. Yeah. It's <laughs> my special feta cape on it for me. Raina, you're never going to get through the food in that fridge. Also, now you're going to be all drugged up. Like I'm coming over here Sunday and I'm taking everything. Take all the cheese. So if you guys listen last week, I am getting my yearly breast reduction, my yearly boob job. I'm not getting another reduction. But as we're recording, I already have a new boob. But it's the... <laughs> <laughs> just one. Right, you know like, Raina loves just one tit. <laughs> I showed both of my boobs in my birthday. Oh, yeah. Show. You've been showing two since 2022. <laughs> it was 2022 and she was like, no more. That's very funny. In 2021, you showed one. In 2022, you showed two. 2023, you showed your pussy. 2021, first boob job. 2022, second boob job. 2023, third boob job. <laughs> oh my God. You know, it's so oh. funny. Like if you were showing your boobs and I was like a jealous competitive friend and I was like, she pulled my pussy out and everyone's like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> too far. Free the clip. I did offer to get a vagina plasty with you the other day. I'll go. Well, I am feeling better about my vagina. Good. I'm glad. I had a moment where I was like, well, we know why. Was it a hot day? Well, when that lady waxed my pussy in Philly and then put a mirror up to it, like it was a hair salon. It wasn't when you walked out with that jersey and no panties on in front of my dad. <laughs> what happened? This is fake news. <laughs> you really? Just be honest. Your labia was below the jersey. Right now, that's insane. <laughs> that's fucked up. No, it wasn't. It's not because you have a long labia. You have a long torso. Wait, uh, no. And that jersey, a short jersey. That jersey and my dad came, loved it. That jersey came down to mid thigh. My labia doesn't hang to my. <laughs> My dad loved it. Your dad did not see my, my dad pussy. Keeps talking about how you look. That's probably why. I, saw those lips. I could see where he was standing. You know what? People don't even know what we're talking about. Anyway, thank you, Ohio, for three <laughs> amazing shows. It's been a minute because we recorded before we left, but just still wanted to say thank yous, of course, that we ended the Snack City Tour part one, first half of the year, with three incredible shows in Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati. And we ride for Ohio so hard. People are like, thank you for being so nice about Ohio. I will defend Ohio. We love our audience there so much. We have the most fun. And we did have the Cavs 216 Sticks, which is their like stomp esque drum line. So they're like trash cans and like buckets and it's like the street style. And we had that whole squad and they brought us all this nice calf stuff. Mm -hmm. And we had the Bengals cheerleaders in Cincinnati, the Bengals. And then we had this amazing collegiate drum line called the Black Ice Percussion from Wilberforce University in Columbus. So we had three amazing acts and we just had a great time. But the Cavs brought us this jersey and I like put it on just jokingly. We actually did wear them, but I put mine on with like nothing underneath because I had a and a thirst trap and then I came out and like lifted up my arms to be funny and you swear I showed your dad my pussy but I didn't he doesn't pay attention to anything you could have <laughs> walked up to his face with your bare tits and he wouldn't have noticed I'm Love lucky he so even knows much. your name <laughs> <laughs> he's so great that trip was really special and wonderful and just like the best way to go out and we did these huge shows in May at the biggest theaters we perform at and then we did these three shows in Ohio and every one of them were just so fantastic it was just like the best way to start the summer and end the tour and my dad came he said that oh, it's like the sweetest thing he said watching me perform makes him feel like he did something good with his life Aww. so he drove to cleveland came to the show and he just loves ashley and, and we both showed our tits in cincinnati it's the first time cincinnati titty cincinnati titty I don't even know how to spell Cincinnati. So don't That's even try funny. That one. Cincinnati titty. Okay. <laughs> oh, to wrap up the former conversation, I'm having a boob job tomorrow, which will have been five days ago. So I talked about it last week, but I'll give you guys updates as it comes. I didn't mean to be so flippant about it. I have some scar tissue I need to Well, you talked about it last yeah. week. So yeah. that's what I did. And Ashley's picking me up this time. Yeah. I started with my most neurotically, like, I'll take care of you friend, Emily. And then the next boob job, Jeremy. Because Emily couldn't come. Where was I for the second one? You and your sister in law's baby shower. So oh, you right. Dewey. Oh, yeah. And Jeremy, not so nurturing, but that's okay. And then, so I'm upgrading from the nurturing level of Jeremy and I have you. And now all my friends have had the chance to pick me up at the hospital. Third time's a charm. Yeah. So would you call this a breast augmentation, though? Is that an accurate? It's an augmentation. It's not a reduction. Yeah. They're just going to remove some scar tissue yeah. and move around some breast tissue. I don't know what they're going to do in there, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're going to put a needle in my arm. Four hours later, I'm going to wake up and something will have happened. Okay. So. And I'll be there. I'm excited. 
But um, that trip was really long. Like we took this trip. How long were we on? Like nine days? You were on like 10 days? I was on 10 days, yeah. I was so exhausted. Like I was not okay. On my birthday on Sunday, Melanie texted me happy birthday and I wrote her back, happy birthday. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you wrote back. So Dead weird. sober, 10 a.m. <laughs> my mom was like, you seem really tired. Maybe oh. you're anemic. As people get older, they become anemic. I was well, like, you try being in six cities in seven days that, and tell yeah. me you're not exhausted. Well, so we did these three shows, three back-to-back, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, and then you went to Pittsburgh and I went to Delaware. And that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like I truly feel like I got to relax. Like it truly felt like time off. We had like a call here and there, but we really set it up so we finally actually got to relax after the tour. And it was really so rejuvenating. And then I went to New York and spent the weekend in New York. And it was such a long trip, but I still feel fine because I really feel like I got a vacation for once, sort of. Like mm -hmm. I was in Delaware with my family and of course, baby Jay. And I went to yoga and rode my bike and laid in the sunshine and really felt like it did a lot for me to then go straight to New York. And of course, just hit the ground running and have like a crazy weekend, lack of sleep, all the things. But I still feel like that reset me a lot. And it was just so wonderful to do that at the end of the first half of the tour, like actually be able to Take That's a day, nice. relax, I have know. some time with our families, of course. But that is, that is so funny that you wrote happy birthday back. <laughs> <laughs> I like read the text message. I was like, am I good? If I'm like really not okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been so tired. Like what was I've been really tired lately. When was it when you were just kept sleeping? <laughs> On my birthday? I don't know. No, like, was oh, in Cincinnati, Cincinnati when went, she just kept sleeping? Yeah, you went and had a day. I slept for like 10 hours the night before <laughs> yeah. I had a nap for three Oh, hours. that's what it was. You just like kept <laughs> sleeping. We were like, thought you might have mono. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I took three naps in a day in Sacramento. Yes. I napped on the plane on the way there. I took a morning nap and an afternoon nap. So am I still holding the record for like for a nap in a day? In a day? <laughs> yeah. And also I just, well, I don't justify this to anybody, but like we work all day long and then we have to go do a show yeah, at eight and we get to sound check at six. It's a lot. Yeah. So. People ask what we do during the day. I'm like, nap. So I went to my parents' house also, and my dad said this thing to me. I was like, I can't tell if that's an insult. I worked out both days I was there. <laughs> so I went to the gym. Him and my mom lived next door to each other. So in their community, I went to their gym. And my dad was like, I'm proud of you for doing that. <laughs> there was a tinge of like, you should be doing that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Proud of you for working out. Proud of you for working out. His whole personality is working out. Oh, so he just wants me to have that in common with him. Well, yes. <laughs> and so we told this at the Cleveland show. He obviously came into town and I knew he was in town and I wasn't able to go to lunch because I had to take a nap. And <laughs> but I obviously saw him and was able to bond with him later that evening and then the next morning for breakfast. But I was in my robe in the hotel in Cleveland and I needed to fill my water bottle up. And I had checked the gym out earlier to see if they had a Peloton. So I knew there was like a water thing in the gym. So I went up to fill my water and was like, I'm not putting on clothes to do this. Like I'm going to crawl right back into bed and nap. So I had my robe on. So I went up to the eighth floor and went in the gym with my robe and filled my water bottle up. And as I walked in the gym, I was like, there was this like little old man running on the treadmill. <laughs> I mean, not many like 76 year old five foot four men are around on a hotel gym. And I was like, I know Raina's dad loves to run. So I did like see him and I was like, I think that's him. But A, I don't want my contacts in. And then B, what I don't want to do is startle this man and have him fly off the treadmill and then be responsible. Look at you in that robe. <laughs> like, and then I was like, that's going to be an awkward thing to even talk to him. I'm just going to yes. like get my water and leave. And I didn't think he saw me, but then like I told him later and he was like, obviously that was me. And he was like, I did see this lady come in in a robe. And I was like, is she sleepwalking? It was so funny. Is she sleepwalking? That is very funny. Like that's what you do in the middle of the night. You're in your pajamas. You go get water. And so it's 3 p.m. and I'm in a robe filling up my water thing. Of course, he was like, someone's sleepwalking. I really enjoyed watching you two interact. God, really I love fun. him so much. And he kept farting. Raina! <laughs> Stop! Don't put him on blast. He, he farted so loud and then gaslit me into thinking there was something gaslit wrong with you. me. He, really, he was like, what? This is the original gaslighting. <laughs> He farted like twice. He farted so loud. And I looked at him like, are you serious? And he looked at me like, are you serious? I looked at Tessa like, is he serious? <laughs> uh, anyway, we will see you guys in the fall. Yeah. The rest of the week was really 
I did do a little bit of self-talk because, you know, my birthday was coming up. And mm-hmm. I think that you do a lot of check-ins with yourself about your life when your birthday is coming up. And I just was like... You're not doing well enough. No. I want to make eight You haven't figures. accomplished anything. <laughs> I want to make eight figures. I want to be six feet tall. That's a callback from something we just recorded that will be out in like three weeks. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> so I was like planning both birthday parties, one in New York and one in LA. And I was just like, I can't believe to do this. Like plan both of these. And then two really hard travel days and I'm also just having a situation with somebody in my life that's a little stressful and sad so just had to do like a lot of self-talk to be like here's the list of things that are upsetting me here's what I can deal with today here's what Mm -hmm. I can address this afternoon or tomorrow here's what can be put off long term and here's what I'm like really happy about I had these great shows I got to see my amazing family we went to New York we did all this press it was really fun we did all these barstool shows these people we're friends with and I get to have these birthday parties and I get to be able to provide a nice experience for people and it helped me to really reframe but yeah it's not all like sunshine and rainbows and I had to have some real self-talk last week yeah, I, that's interesting. I, I didn't talk to you like in full about really all that. I mean, I knew you were stressed and you left me like one crying voice note. How many, how much did we cry in voice notes last week? Because <laughs> <laughs> I cried all the way down the FDR voice zone with you. But I think we had a lot of like self reflection last week. We had too much time to ourselves. That's what a it was. Nap. We, had, <laughs> we actually had to take a vacation and we took some time to actually think and reflect. That voice note, uh, as I was crying, I was like, stop it. <laughs> Well, what happened was that Tessa and I got our wires crossed. She thought that this car was confirmed and I thought it was confirmed. And we both thought that the other person had confirmed it. So I realized at eight o'clock in the morning at the end of the Ohio trip, it, like it's not your fault. I thought that I was going to take a car and then I realized at 8am I don't have a car or a flight. And so I was just like, yeah. fuck. I was Day like, of. Yeah. so exhausted. We've done these three shows. I was so excited to get home and see my family. And I was like, oh, I have to like fix this now. And I had a total meltdown. I know. Yeah. That would be a problem for anybody. Like you think you're going to travel that day. You realize you wake up in the morning, you're tired as fuck. You've been working, busting your ass. And then you're like, don't have what you need to do to travel. You have to figure it out that day. Would you have to take two layovers? Yeah. So it was a bummer. It's not how I wanted to spend my day, but I also just had to be like, I mean, look at these last three days and look how great this is. And you get to have two birthday parties and that's like, you're able to fix it. You have the like resources and stuff. I said that too, as I was pulling up to the airport, I was like, I'm just glad that I have the resources to fix this. Because of stuff like that, it's like, I don't know, 10 years ago, I would have been like, I'm fucked. Absolutely. You know, I live in Cincinnati now. I'm going to start walking. <laughs> like, and it was not Tessa's fault or your fault. It was the fucking company's fault. Yeah. yeah it's it's so yeah, anyway, but yeah, I think birthdays make you do a lot of self talk. Your birthday's yeah. coming up too. You've done a lot of self talk about it, and you evaluate your life. And I was able to compartmentalize some stuff and work through some other stuff. And ultimately, I'm really grateful. And both parties are really great. And I feel really just happy and grateful for what it was. I had a fun boat party in New York, year yes. three, and then a party at home in LA, which was really nice. It was really great. And, you know, the boat, we've done this boat in New York for the third year you've done it. And it was awesome, obviously. And we loved hanging out with our New York friends. But what I really liked about the LA party was people were like making friends at that party too. So like I brought my other best friend, Kate, and nobody's better than Kate. She just is so outgoing and funny and can talk to anybody. And she's in a good mood. She's the top. And I didn't need to hang out with her all night. You know, like I brought her in a place where she didn't know anybody really besides you. Mm -hmm. Some people she'd met like once or twice. And I kind of forgot even half the time she was there. She met so many people. I mean, she's still new-ish to LA, you know? So all these people just kept meeting each other. And then it was so funny because Michael Blaustein came, comedian. He's been on the show. Him and Trevor Wallace have the podcast Stiff Socks. And we just love him. You guys should follow him if you don't. And Alyssa Amoroso, our new friend, publicity, she was like, wait, it's so funny. I don't follow a lot of comedians. And that guy just came up in my algorithm and I went on like a deep dive. And I think he's so funny. I'm obsessed with him. And like, I walk in and he's here. Like just funny things like that. It was almost like a lot of these people also just moved here or within the year or whatever it is. So a bunch of people met each other and like made new friends too. So that was like a fun energy. It was like a different energy as opposed to New York. Everybody knows each other. They've all been this fucking boat for the past three years, Uh you know, whatever it is. Nothing makes me happier than when two of my friends that are not connected at all meet and they like each other. And I'm like, oh, I picked well. Yeah. Also my friend Lisa, who also lives like next door to you, she's a new friend. And she was like, I'm such a Michael Blaustein fan. I'm obsessed with stiff socks. And then he was there and I was like, Michael Blaustein was just like, hit at the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was really fun. It was just nice to feel like you made the right decision to move somewhere, which I do. Yeah. Let's take a quick break okay. and then we will get back into it. Okay. I am going to tell you guys about Earth Breeze. This is relevant because I was just at my brother's house and I love doing laundry there so much because they have like a big washer and dryer. Like 
I don't have the biggest. I have a fancy European style. It's kind of takes longer to dry. Bottom line is I feel like when I do laundry at their house, it's like peak. They have a whole laundry room. Right. You know, like I put something in the dryer, it's dry. Anyway, bottom line is I'm like obsessed with doing laundry at Matt's house. Also, I love doing laundry. Also, Matt loves doing laundry, which is a big laundry family. Like I really get off on he doing it. He gave them to me for Christmas. The, the sheets. sheets. Yeah. He gave them to me for Christmas. But like I get excited to bring dirty clothes there to like literally do laundry. <laughs> so they are the ones that introduced me to this. So Earth Breeze is liquidless laundry detergent that dissolves 100% in any wash cycle, hot or cold. You don't have to measure it. There's no mess, no heavy plastic jugs. I mean, have you ever just tried to like walk home from the store? with a laundry detergent you're like breaking your back yeah i've lived in new york my whole life but yeah right like if you live in a place even here sometimes i'll walk to the grocery store why is this so big yeah (laughs) because it's mostly water in there so earth breeze has really made the whole concept of detergent better and it's even great for sensitive skin i do have sensitive skin so the eco sheets are hyperallergenic and dermatologist tested and it's compatible with high efficiency washers gray water systems and it's septic safe and there are flexible subscriptions you can be adjusted paused or canceled at any time no contracts or fees and then it's delivered right to your door via free carbon neutral shipping at a frequency you can set that works and you still get a powerful clean. So if you're really unfamiliar with this style of laundry detergent, they look like, and they're thicker. I don't want to say they're like dryer sheets, but they're just sheets. You know the amount that you want and you just like pull it off the sheet and like put it right in where you put your laundry detergent and it gets your clothes super clean. Again, it dissolves and I just have no complaints. I love it. I have totally replaced my liquid laundry detergent with it. Gets your clothes so clean. It's just so easy, so easy to store. I mean, you should do this no matter what, but especially if you're tight for space, it's such like a folder. Yeah. It's a tiny little thing. little thing. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like you can stick it anywhere. Space saver. Yeah. And <laughs> it's better for the planet. Of course, makes your laundry so much easier. So we cannot recommend it enough. You can switch from the old-fashioned goo to something new. Right now, you can subscribe to EarthBreeze and save 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash GGE to get started. That's earthbreeze.com slash GGE for 40% off. Yes. And to talk about our next partner, so maybe you guys relate to this. You're having like a, is this normal question about your health? And you've been stewing on it, which I've certainly been there, just like putting stuff off, going to get medical help, and you text all your friends, and you get medical help from the group, which is (laughs) the group chat. (laughs) That's your doctor. Yeah, the group chat. You're not going to find quality medical medical device in the group chat. Some of my friends are doctors, but you can find a doctor on ZocDoc. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. They listen like a friend, but they actually give you expert care that you need. And I use ZocDoc to book doctors. You should too. It's a really positive, easy experience. They're a trusted guide. So no more kind of doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you with your favorite doctor that you haven't even met yet. And millions of people use the free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. I mean, I have like scoured so many review forms trying to figure out like, is any of this legit with doctors? And it's hard to like pick and trust somebody. I'm just obsessed with ZocDoc. Yeah. You can search by your insurance, like you said. It's great. Just lessen the burden on yourself and all the searching. You can just go directly into their app. You can book an appointment with a few taps and start feeling better faster and just minimize the surprises because you'll really always know what you're getting. There is no alarms, no surprises, and you can choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors, specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload, and verify your insurance information and get the care you need. So go to ZocDoc.com slash GG and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash G-G-E, ZocDoc.com slash G-G. Okay, we have a big, fun announcement on the Vibes side. So excited. We have this incredible new feature in the app. If you guys are new here, we have a company called Vibes Only and we sell sex toys and accoutrement. And there is also an app that goes with it. All the toys are Bluetooth connected and they pair with the app and there is a remote control in there and there is erotic audio stories and there's fun educational and spicy videos, not porn videos, but like there's some in there to teach you about porn. porn. Yeah, yeah. But just want to always clarify when we say video when we're talking about erotic content and it's incredible and it is changing lives and we're so proud of it. But the new feature that is just just released. The name is called Lyric and it is basically a script that you can read along as you listen to the audio, the erotic stories. It really excites me because I was like an OG reader of uh-huh. erotica and I used to just like love to read porn. I thought like, what is that weird? Am I the only person who does this? And it's super normal. It's really spicy to me. And now you can do either inside of the app. It is a paid feature, but you can listen to the erotic audio and follow along. When you open up a story, you hit play and it starts playing and you scroll down on the screen and then you'll see the lyrics appear and it will highlight each 
one as you're going. Mm -hmm. And you can do either. So you can either read along as you listen to the audio. You can just straight up read it. Erotic reading just really turns me on. I love it so much. And to have a voice on top of it is so sexy. So you can do them in tandem or you can do them separately. We are really excited about this product release. We've worked really hard on it. And it goes with all the stories. So think of this as your summer reading list. Yeah. Make reading sexy again. Yeah. Reading makes you horny. (laughs) Then this is for you. I love this. I love having like lyrics to songs or I watch TV with closed captioning. So this is like- (laughs) Masturbate with closed captioning. (laughs) Closed captioning for masturbating. So I think we got a message early on that was like, I'd love to just read these and, you know, put your own voice to it. I mean, it's intended to read along and listen. You know, we created these audio stories with these sexy voices, but you can just be reading it. You know, mm-hmm. put whatever voice in your head you want to All it, right. you know, especially if you aren't into like the gender of that voice or the sound of the voice or whatever it is. You can just have the script and have at it. You know, what you could do <laughs> is make your partner read it. Oh, I love that idea. That's so smart. I just came up with just, this. Wow. Oh my God. Like if you're trying to <clears throat> train someone to <laughs> talk more in the bedroom or dirty talk more, be like, read this to me. I love that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love He's this. Like, if someone's like, I just don't know what to say. It's like, I got you. Say this. You just scroll down Read to the, like, the dirtiest this. part so to the funny. very end. Just to get them comfortable in the first place. So then they're just saying it like without having to think about what to say. And then horse. eventually, you know, you lead them. What is it? You don't want to lead, lead them to water. water. You just remind, remind them, them they're, they're a horse. horse. <laughs> You're a horse and you got this. <laughs> And if you are not familiar with our erotic audio stories, we have male and female, we have female and female, all kinds of scenarios of power dynamics. And we have some favorites, the cowboy, we have people that will dominate you. And Mm -hmm. it's just so many different sexy scenarios. So if you thought, I don't know if erotic audio is for me, we have free stories in the app, we have free videos in the app. This again is a paid feature, but there's a subscription and all of our toys are Bluetooth connected to the app. So it vibes along with the erotic audio and there's a remote. So yes. And again, just to reiterate that you can download it for free and get in there, not this feature, but like you can get in there and see what it's all about and use the remote. Yep. So really excited. Spice up your sex life, you guys. Check it out at Vibes Only in the app store, vibesonly.com. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a spicy update? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I was in New York. I stayed a little longer than you. I was there for the whole weekend and I was there with a guy and like spent the weekend with (laughs) But I'm like telling this because like he's going to listen. His friends will listen. Totally. You know, I want to just. Mom might listen. <laughs> I don't think it's mom's a snack head yet. <laughs> Got a lot of moms at the shows lately. Okay. Yeah. And it was just really great. I mean, I've kind of mentioned him a few times, like lightly, like someone I've been talking to and saw on the tour. And we decided to meet up in New York because he lives in the East Coast. And it was just like a wonderful weekend. I had such a great time with him. I obviously have plans to see him again. I talk to him all the time, you know, every day. And we just really like each other. I mean, yeah, so it's yeah. just it's just nice. I mean, he's just intentional and really good looking and really attracted to him. And he makes me laugh. And he's just like a good guy. And I just like feel really positive about it. And it was just so fun to like run around New York and have like a really great New York weekend. I mean, obviously he'll come here at some point and I'll visit him, I guess. But that was just... (laughs) He'll say a thing and then I'll say a thing and then I'll say, oh, like a conversation. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But we just, we had like good dinners and we just uh, did some stuff that I haven't actually done in New York. We were like outside and he met a couple of my friends and we just had a great time. What? I was laughing about when Melanie and Chelsea and I were kneeling yeah, down. Yeah, why don't you tell this? <laughs> First of all, we had the birthday party on Thursday night. I went out with somebody all night after that. And I'll decide if I want to talk about it later. But it was a special night. <laughs> <laughs> Special, special night for a, everybody. Special night with a special person. I woke up Friday real banged up and yeah. I decided I couldn't go out that night and two of my girlfriends came over to the hotel and I knew you guys had plans to have drinks in the bar downstairs and we were like, let's go check in the bar and we were like looking through the window at you guys taking photos and I was too jacked up. I didn't want to be like, hee I wish you would have come in. in. Yeah. I, was, I would have come in too hot. But we were, taking, <laughs> <laughs> we were taking pictures of you and the staff was like, you have to stop this. Okay, so ma'am, this jogged my memory of something that was really funny. So he met me at the hotel. Just one really cute thing that he did was that he got his own hotel room for that first night, knowing I was going to 
he was going to stay with me, but to like not impose on me and be in my space. And he got in a few hours before I was even free. So he just booked himself a hotel room and put his stuff there. And it was like very nice and unexpected and like very adult. And I love that. So he came to meet me at the hotel without his things. His things were like at a hotel across the street and met me in the bar for a drink. And I kind of had like a hope that we might like go up to the room like before dinner or whatever. So I actually didn't even bring anything down to the hotel bar besides my room key. My phone was charging anyway, but I just left everything. And I felt nice to like be totally free, like nothing, no purse, no nothing just to roll up to the bar. So we wrap up and I was like, I need to go back up to the room to get my phone and get my things. And of course we go up to the room and we just like start making out right away, whatever one thing leads to another. And the windows are open, like the blinds are open, right? We just didn't shut them. And the whole thing with a standard hotel is that like it's built for people like watch you. (laughs) So I never know what's going on in hotels. Like are the windows frosted? Can they see in completely? We've been asking this the last seven times we stayed there and I I'd never think about it as I walk by. I know, it. like I never check, and people are like, "If you can see someone, they can see you." I'm like, "Really though?" Mm-hmm. So the, the my glass. It was bright. The sun hadn't set yet, and the blinds were open. We like never shut them. I'm in a corner room, and we just weren't paying attention. And so we do our thing, and then we go to dinner. And I get a text from you, and the first thing that says is, "We saw you." Ah. Oh, no! And I was like, I literally like felt like I was going to throw up. And of course, like you didn't see me. You weren't in the condo across the way. But like all I heard when you said like, we just saw you was like, oh my God, they saw us hooking up because it was already in my head that people would have seen us. And so then I'm saying like, of course, she just met in the bar and I saw your pictures and stuff. But my immediate reaction to just hooking up with somebody and having the blinds open and then you saying we all saw you. Wait, I actually never asked for clarity on this. Isn't this weird when like somebody jogs your memory and you're like, I never followed up. You said I thought you meant like hooking up. And I was like, why would I have seen her hooking up (laughs) in her hotel room on a different floor than me? Right. All you said about it was like, damn, before dinner, go off, queen. I I never was like, how would I have watched you hook up? Right. never occurred to me to ask. Okay. Anyway, great weekend. This is like the embodiment to me of like that meme that says if he likes you you'll know and if he doesn't you'll be confused and it's nice to meet somebody that's intentional I think that like it does feel easy when it's the right person I'm not saying he's the right person I don't have any idea he hasn't gotten through me yet but um, (laughs) I don't know but I do think it's like a really nice start to any relationship when you just feel like this person is intentional they call when they say they're going to they text when they say that there's no like anxiety of is this person going to show up and all of my best relationships have been like that Yes. I'm glad you brought that up. This is still new, but also arguably that is the most exciting time and the most anxiety ridden time, right? It can be, it can be. It shouldn't be. And the way that I feel is 0% anxiety about anything and 100% security in how this person feels about me and that I obviously feel the same. And you don't always get that. And you might not even know what that feels like yet. If you're listening to us and you're a younger listener, I don't even know that I felt that until late in my 20s, maybe. Eh, I mean, maybe like my high school boyfriend, like one other guy throughout my 20s, but like the first person that actually turned into a real long-term relationship where there was zero of that, where it was just like, you wake up, you have a good morning text from them. You know what they're doing. They know what you're doing. I'm not saying you need to communicate all day long, but like you kind of do and you know how they feel about you and they tell you and you can trust they're going to say what they're going to do. Like It's the best feeling in the world. And it actually is like, it's not that rare. It should just be what it is when something is right. Again, I don't know what the future holds for us, but that is how it should feel. And I was watching this one TikTok and this woman was like, the one thing you should have with a guy, she's just talking to women, is that he's sure about you. And she's like, I can work with anything else. Like That's the one thing. If there's one thing, it's just that they should be sure mm-hmm. about you. She's like, you're gonna have a fucking broke ass bitch, loser, whatever, doesn't have a job. But if he's sure about you, I can work with it. <laughs> That's her. <laughs> <laughs> she used that example. Like it was just something funny of the way she said it. Yeah. She goes, I can work with it, you know, but that's the number one thing. And it really does ring true. And it's like, it's tough. It's tough because we all get bogged down in the like having a crush or dating someone or situationships and you're unsure. We've dealt with it as evolved as we are, as old as we are, as much information as we have, we still get into those. And I've done that within the last couple of years of like, 
what am I going to hear from this person, this and that. And like, this is a reminder of like how it should actually feel. Absolutely. And every really good relationship in my life has felt like this in the beginning, has felt intentional. I have felt secure. I have never once felt like, are they going to show up? Are they going to make the next plan with me? Yeah. And when I haven't felt like that, I can't actually tell you a time when I turned it into a serious relationship. Because mm-hmm. like, if somebody is being like wishy-washy mm-hmm. about me emotionally, I haven't seen it turn into a relationship. And even people who really care about you, like my ex who came to Florida with us, he's great when he's in person and I'm in front of him or we're on the phone, but like, then I don't hear from him for three mm-hmm. weeks. Yeah. And I know that the last conversation we had, I was sort of just like riding him. I was like, you're not even proud of me. And we got off the phone and he called me back and he was like, I think you are so wonderful and so pretty. Yeah. And so bleh. And I haven't heard from him in three weeks because mm-hmm. like, that's just the kind of person that is. And like, if somebody makes you feel like you just don't know if they're going to show up, like that can't be your person. And this person, for example, they can blow in and out of my life, but I know what it is. Yeah. And it's not going to take me down. But yeah, it's nice to feel that security in the beginning. And I always used to like joke with you that like, I never, my ex fiance, I never thought about him ever during the day. I know. And it's not that I don't get like giddy to hear from the person. It's just yeah. like, I could sit down at a work meeting and be present. I could sit down with my girlfriends and be present. And yes. I don't have to worry like, are they going to follow through with this plan I made with them later? I know. And we have to remember that, yes, you can be excited, but like some of the butterflies you speak of are just anxiety. And I've thought about that too, because, you know, we had this incredible weekend and then parted ways. And then I just was assessing how I felt. Because it wasn't this longing or something. It was just like a comfort. Yeah, I'll talk, talk to him, to him when I get to the airport. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, like it was just, mm-hmm. I don't know. You're so right. Like you don't actually think about them as much when it actually is like really mm-hmm. healthy, yeah. I guess. And you think about the good stuff and the giddy stuff, but like the mental gymnastics of like, what is this going to be? Yeah. Gonna t- like, it just goes away for me when somebody really likes me and I can feel that. I know you kind of have to decipher the difference because you're so used to feeling like this butterfly feeling that actually could be rooted in anxiety and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. There are people I think that like treat you so bad or so indifferent that when they treat you well, it feels so good. And that's, you got to check in with yourself about that too. Like is the fact that they made a plan a really big deal or are they just so shitty to me all the time that it feels better when they finally do one nice thing? Well, it's like that intermittent reward. Like you never know when it's coming. They did that study with like rats where you never know when the reward is coming so you like keep like waiting around for it but I had this relationship after my ex-fiance I dated this guy and he just like never showed up but when he did it was like we'd see a movie we'd take a walk in Central Park then we'd go see a museum exhibit and then we'd go to the MoMA and sit at the bar and have this amazing night and I'd be like this is the best person I've ever met and it's like no he just did one nice thing for me out of the last 15 shitty things he did for me and I thought it was like so great when he would do something nice for you but it wasn't he just was like acting normal sometimes and terrible to me the rest of the time yeah (laughs) Yeah, exactly (laughs) Okay, so then I just wanted to tell you about a couple fan things. Just shout out to the Girls Guide audience. One thing I got this DM, we were sitting at dinner because I showed it to him like right away. And I got this DM from this girl and she was like, Ashley, I just saw you walking around the East Village. You look stunning and you were with the most beautiful man, all caps. And I just thought it was so funny. And I showed it to him and the rest of it, I was just like, beautiful man. Like I just kept like bringing it up. I was like, that's just so nice. Like they're just so sweet. You wore a dress this weekend. I wore a dress this weekend. I was so excited. I wasn't in the dress then, but I did look stunning. No, you no. look cute. I was snooping on you. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then the other thing, <laughs> I haven't told you this yet. So we did dinner. We went to a cocktail bar. Then we actually decided to stay out and like have fun. So we like went out. We were like dancing at the Folly on Friday night, which is open till four. So we're walking down Houston back to the hotel at three in the morning. Three. Yeah. I'm not kidding. And I see these two girls and one girl, she like rushes up to me. She's like, oh my God, Ashley, I'm such a fan. She's like fangirling. She was just like so cool and so cute. I just love our listener so much. And he kind of was like hanging back. And then she goes, you, whatever you're doing, step it up. (laughs) She's like this one right here. You think you're going to date her? Like, literally, it was a 3 a.m. Was she slurring? No. That is so funny. I'm never not slurring at 3 a.m. I mean, she might have had some alcohol, but she wasn't, like, slurring. And I was like, this girl, she, like, laid into him. She's like, you're going to be with Ashley? You better step it up. And he was like, what did I do? I wouldn't even say that. (laughs) So I believe it. I wouldn't say it. And then she disappears into the night. (laughs) Didn't want a photo. Nothing. She just goes. So then we're walking down the street. We probably got, like, a block away. And I hear a scream from down the street. 
and that was when her friend realized who I was. Her friend doesn't really watch the podcast. She just listens. And she was like, oh my God, that's girl's goodie. So they run back down. <laughs> her and the friend are running towards us. And then we had to get like the photos and stuff like that. And the main girl, I'm pretty sure her name was Aisha. I say that because it'll be relevant. And so we're walking, we turn onto Bowery to go up to the hotel. And then there's these like three dudes standing around, like maybe like older dudes are like standing around outside this bar or whatever. And they just start hollering. They're like, look at him walking on the right side of the sidewalk. What? <laughs> yes. So they were like, look at this gentleman. Look at this king. It's like, just a crazy experience. I know. They were like, that's right. You better be walking on the street side of the sidewalk, like which we've talked about before. I mean, yeah. we were walking, we were like holding hands and he was like on the street side and he goes, where's Aisha to see this? <laughs> I love a callback king. I thought it was so funny. <laughs> we were like, Aisha, are you seeing this? I'm stepping it up. It was just like the funniest, like two well, things. Aisha, if you're listening, yeah. stepped it up. W what a queen. <laughs> It was just very funny. A lot of our listeners. Because someone kind of knocked him down and then he got like <laughs> built back up by a bunch of dudes. It's cilantro. <laughs> that so, is so great. Anyway, that's like all I'll say after I've talked for 20 minutes about it. But yeah, it was just like a really great weekend. And that's kind of like what's going on to stay the union. I love to see you thriving. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right. I think that's it. We are taking off next week. We're yes. taking a vacation. <laughs> Imagine that. So we are going away for your birthday to Mexico. I'm very excited with a huge group of friends to celebrate your birthday. I just truly, truly cannot wait. You have planned this entire thing yourself. Boat, dinner reservations. I have to like have a spreadsheet of everyone's <laughs> flight information to like get the cars organized from You're the airport. The meals. Yeah. The reservations, the whole thing. I really did it all. So I hope, yeah, it'll be so fun. I just want it. I want the planning to be over. Yeah, I know. I fully feel you. Well, I appreciate you. I'm so excited for our first uh, vacation since last summer. Our no, business manager said something about like people that like pretend that vacations are work trips. And we were like, we don't take vacations. So it will never happen. Yeah. I was like, write off everything, <laughs> Scott. It's all work. No, this will be so good. I can't wait. This is just such a solid group. I think there's 11 of us maybe 12 and <laughs> we'll follow along but yeah we won't see you guys next week but we'll be back on the 10th yeah so we have a really amazing episode today with a fantastic guest and then we have a mega july lined up for you guys I yeah think. We'll see. <laughs> but i think yeah uh, we have some really unbelievable guests so we're really excited for what's to come Okay. Well, we will get into it with Roxy. You guys are going to love this one, but let me just tell you about Pretty Litter. I feel like I always tie this back to travels, visiting my family. I was just at my parents' house. They have a bunch of cats. The cats are running around and they do use Pretty Litter. They really can't imagine their lives as cat owners without it because you could scrub, dust, wash, shampoo, disinfect, and vacuum your entire house. But no matter how much cleaning you do, you could still smell your cat's litter box. So that can change when you make the switch to Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter is is totally elite. No other cat litter beats Pretty Litter's ability to instantly trap odor. It's ultra absorbent. It's lightweight, low dust, and one six pound bag works for up to a month without clumping. So no more wasting litter and no bulky bag. Again, we're all about saving space as women who lived in New York and, you know, wherever it's just nice to not have some giant bag of litter and it'll really give you peace of mind. So the coolest thing about Pretty Litter is that the crystals change color to indicate early signs of potential illness in your cat, like urinary tract infections, kidney issues, and more. So basically you can keep tabs in your pet's house. Health. If your cat is like masking something that's wrong, this is going to help you detect it early and keep them healthy, extend their life. And it ships free right to your door. We love that. You'll never run out. You won't have to lug those huge bags from a store. That's a theme of the episode today too. Just like stop carrying giant stuff from the store or from your car or whatever. Baggage. So <laughs> yeah, we love it. It is so much better and different and elite compared to anything else. Once you do pretty litter, you'll really never go back. And again, the health monitor is going to give you peace of mind, et cetera because we know you love your pets and you want to keep them healthy. So Pretty Litter can help eliminate cat box stink in your house. Make the switch today. Go to prettylitter.com slash GGE and use code GGE to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash GGE, code GGE to save 20% on your first order. Again, prettylitter.com slash GGE, code GGE. Terms and conditions apply and you can see their site for details. Yes. And last but not least, if you ever wished you had visibly thicker hair, less shedding, maybe stress is causing your hair to thin, 
There are multiple root causes of hair thinning, and Nutrafol addresses key root causes through a whole body approach to hair health. I mean, my hair has thinned my whole life through hot styling and just getting older. So Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve visible thickness and shedding from postpartum to menopause, no matter your life stage. They have four unique formulas to support women, and each is physician formulated using drug-free science-based ingredients so you get more reliable results. So you'll go online, you'll take their wellness quiz. It's really simple, super, super quick, and they'll identify the causes of thinning and recommend a solution for you. It supports healthy hair growth from within. It targets root causes of thinning, so stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, metabolism. So that's why they say whole body health. And in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplements for six months. We're going to give you guys a little discount. You can check it out, see if it's right for you. You can take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code GGE. To find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair, Nutrafol.com, spelled N U T R A F O L dot com promo code G G E. That's neutral dot com promo code G G E. Okay, let's head over to our interview with Roxy. Okay, guys, we are really excited to welcome our guest here today. She is a renowned inspirational speaker and the author of Manifest, a book which will help teach you everything you need to know in order to manifest the life of your dreams. You have seen her in Vogue, Forbes, Glamour, and more. Please welcome to the show, Roxy Nafusi. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's it's so for coming great. all the way. <laughs> thank you. From no, the UK. So nice. It's so nice to be your place is so like zen vibes oh good that means a lot coming from you thank you it would be bad if you were like i feel anxious i hate it here it's too intense (laughs) no it's so calm like and now it's like immediately felt calm it does have like bali vibes i walked in and i was like i must live here i will do anything was it already like that I didn't do anything. I just moved in. Really? Yeah. Well, I got furniture. Oh my God, what a find. <laughs> yeah. Ashley and I were very specific about where we wanted to live in LA. She had this very specific little triangle she wanted to live in and so did I. So it was like just this area or nothing. I mean, it's really manifested. Yeah, like, I was going to say, that's like step one, be clear in your vision. <laughs> it was so clear. Like where I live was so specific. I live like a block from my best friend, my other best friend besides yeah. Raina. And it's kind of funny that we both chose Airbnbs and then moved into homes like one block from them. Yeah. Like we really were so specific and like this is where we want to like live and have a life so mm-hmm. you definitely manifested did it. it I love it <laughs> yes well tell us about your work and what you do and who you are yeah, just... tell us your whole life story <laughs> oh my god okay so I'll give you a bit of the background so growing up I came from like an Iraqi Muslim family and grew up in Oxford and was definitely as far as I can remember very much an outsider 9-11 happened and all Muslims were basically seen as terrorists, but particularly Iraqis. So I was horrifically bullied and just started, you know, from then to really, really reject myself and who I was. And I had a lot of shame around just being me. And so I changed my name from Rowan to Roxy. And that was kind of my first attempt, I guess, to escape myself. And I moved schools And that kind of self-hatred and self-loathing carried me throughout my whole life. And then when I left school, I found cocaine and I realized I would have a line and suddenly I'd feel confident. Mm -hmm. And so I then fell into this like 10 years of addiction. And it was, you know, for me, cocaine was like my number one thing. I just loved it. And I was smoking like 25 cigarettes a day. They used to call me Fag Ash Lil. Like you would never see me without a cigarette in my mouth, like Mm -hmm. ever. And within that time, I was obviously also suffering from depression, you know, and anxiety. I had no career whatsoever. Literally made no money, had a string of toxic relationships. And um, I feel like he's like, I don't want to comfort you. I know. <laughs> he's like, hearing it's your so story. <laughs> he is like weirdly therapy. Yes, like, he when can he's sense pain. Upset, he yes. That is yeah. so sweet. I was yeah. having the worst day and he like would not get off of me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that is so sweet. He was very sweet. He's, intu- he's intuitive. So then I hit kind of many rock bottoms along the way and I think anyone that's had any experience with addiction knows what that's Mm -hmm. like and I hit kind of one of my last ones in May 2018 so it was five years ago and I 
called a friend of mine and I was like, what should I do? And she was like, oh, you should listen to this podcast on manifesting. And I was like, fuck it, I'll try anything. But this friend, she's called Sophia. She won't mind me saying this. She is quite woo. Like she likes out there things. So I <laughs> thought it was just going to be like full of shit. But I was like, whatever, I'll do it. Yeah. But I listened to this podcast and I realized that that wasn't what it was about. It was really all about your self-worth. And I think in that moment, I realized that I had been manifesting, but in the wrong direction. I'd been keeping myself stuck in this place. So I went home when I started researching everything I could on manifestation and two weeks later um, this Australian guy called Wade messaged me on a dating app on the 7th of June 2018 and exactly a year to the day on the 7th of June 2019 our baby boy wolf was born oh my gosh (laughs) wow and what happened then was that it wasn't that I got pregnant and I was like, oh my God, this is great. Life's perfect. I manifested everything. (laughs) Basically, I got pregnant. I was like, okay, what the fuck? I've got no money. He's got no money. I suddenly had to give up all my addictions, which meant that 28 years of pain came rushing through. Mm -hmm. And I went into like the darkest depression I've ever been through. Every day was a true struggle to be alive. I replaced all the drugs with food so I gained like 75 pounds I stopped leaving the house I was completely reclusive and this is when you're pregnant yeah when I was pregnant. when you're pregnant okay so what had happened and I feel like for me this was like a gift from the universe was a week before I found out I was pregnant I'd started something on my Instagram called Agni Aunt Sundays now I've realized that Americans don't know what Agni Aunt is and I was like should I know what that is like uh-huh it's yeah. like a, a column or like, like an advice, advice column, column. yeah okay exactly. okay so I, so this like mini advice column where I just said to people, I don't know why I started it, but I was like, I just love giving my friends advice. So I was like, if people ask me questions, I can give them advice. Anyway, I'd started this a week before. And then when I fell pregnant, this one advice column became my purpose, my sense of meaning. Because obviously I, I still had no job. I wasn't doing anything else. But through my pain, there was one day of the week where I was of service to others and it gave me a reason to kind of keep going. And I realized that through my pain and through my vulnerability and through my openness, I could help other people feel better. So it wasn't for nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I realized then that that's what I was going to do. And so I would visualize myself that when I had this baby, I was going to make my life the best it could be. And... I also immersed myself in self-development as a whole. I would listen to like all different kinds of speakers and philosophers and thinkers and I would read and watch YouTube and I just kind of brainwashed myself with it almost. And then as soon as I gave birth to Wolf, I was like, this is it. And five months after he was born, I hosted my first workshop in November 2019 and three and a half years on, you know, I don't mean to brag, but. I'm a double Sunday Times bestselling author. Yes, you did. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, my life is completely different. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I get to do what I wanted to do, what I set out to do, which is try and help empower people all over the world. And it really is all thanks to manifestation, but specifically the seven steps to manifesting that I developed. I kind of had practiced on myself and then wanted to teach it with the world. And it works. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I love this story. I love it. I Are keep, you okay? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm so inspired inspired by anybody that just turns their life around like that. And I think that, you know, it's important to communicate that it's never too late to like pick something else. And something we do want to talk about today is feeling like, where's my purpose? And Mm. am I ever going to find it? And it sounds like you really did and it's possible. And I just love the story. I really am so invested in the story too. But I had like one question. So this guy came along, he messaged you. Were you still having addictions and stuff? Or were you kind of started to heal a little bit? So like on our first date, I mean, it was like we met at 12 and I was in the bathroom doing coke by two. Like okay. He didn't tell him. So and you've like changed in this relationship. I just find that fascinating. Yes. Like you were a different person when you met. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, immediately we had this like connection. Uh-huh. So like I was like, I manifested you and the universe brought us together. And I opened up to him a few weeks later and was like, by the way, I've been doing drugs the whole time. Every time we've been together and every day. <laughs> yeah. He was like, oh, like he was so surprised. I was, I was like, I've been high like the whole time. <laughs> There's so many people I would have had to say that to in college. <laughs> All of them. 
<laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say so many people that would have had to say that to you. No, I okay. did drugs the okay, whole time. Yeah. But he was amazing. He, was, he never did drugs. He was like totally different to me. Wow. Like, he was okay. like, didn't really drink. Never so you weren't drugs. in this like together doing drugs no, all the time. No, no, okay, no, got no. it. That was my last boyfriend. But because I was had this like newfound love and I had just discovered manifestation, I did want to change. Mm-hmm. Got so it. I had like started like, also, I mean, I tried to give up like a hundred times before. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know if it would stick. But then obviously when I got pregnant, I had to stick with it. Yeah. But I would say that it wasn't that that made me commit. I mean, I didn't go to AA or do the 12 steps or anything. Now I have one drink, but I never have more than one drink. But that's not for me a battle. I just like one drink. And you can I do it. Yeah. have mm-hmm. no desire to have more. Uh-huh. But for me, what kept me away from falling back into addiction was this sense of purpose. It was this. Like I remember there was an experiment once of rats. So they put rats in this cage and they said that if the rats pressed this button, they'd be given cocaine. And there was nothing else in the cage. And what happened was the rats kept on pressing the button until basically they died. But then they put rats in a different cage, which was almost like rat nirvana. So they had food and other friends and wheels and the rats didn't do it. And it was just a real sign that it wasn't just the cocaine. It's not just the chemical. It's the environment. It's where you're at in your life. And I think for me, I realized that if I changed everything else and if I healed what was driving me to escape, and for me personally, Mm -hmm. I could heal the addiction. Yeah, I love that because I think there's some people that are addicts and that's the way that they're wired and they can't have one drink and they can't do a bump here and there or like whatever it may be. Not that we're doing bumps here and there, but (laughs) I think it sounds like it was what it was doing for you is making you feel confident and out of the self-loathing. And then you switch that with healthier things. Yeah. So now you're just addicted to manifesting. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I definitely, it's fucking true. I definitely became addicted to work massively. (laughs) And it's only in the last six months that I've just like found a balance. Uh, No, I'm totally kidding. But it's just, but it's true. (laughs) It's different. It's like, you know, you think about why you used to drink so hard or why I used to just binge drink. And it's like, it's giving me something else or making me feel more confident or whatever Mm -hmm. the value is in my life that I used Mm -hmm. to do. Uh It's not this like addiction necessarily to the alcohol, which also people definitely have. So So we've brought up manifesting a few times. Yeah. What is manifesting? What does this mean? Okay. So manifesting is using the power of your mind to change and create the reality that you experience. But I think with manifesting is because it's become such a trend, it's also got quite a bad rep. And I think that there are so many misconceptions. And I for sure know that when I first say to somebody, you know, if someone meets me and they don't know me and they say, what do you do? And I say, like, I'm an author. And they say, what's your book about? And I say, manifesting. I know that they're thinking, oh, that shit. Mm. (laughs) You know, like, it takes a minute to be able to really see this. Like, this isn't a woo book. This really is just a self-help book and I think a life Mm -hmm. guide. Well, even if it is just a woo book, if it makes you feel better about your life, then that's fine. Mm, Yeah, no, um, true. It's just kind of lame that people would look down on manifesting. It's like, oh, I don't know, thinking positive and what I want in life and bringing it to me. Totally. What, how How is that so yeah. <laughs> frowned upon it's or so, like, true. so stupid? That's pretty dope. Yeah. I don't know it works. Work for me. <laughs> no, it's so true. And it's not everyone, obviously, but there are these like skeptics who, mm-hmm. and I think it's because people think that it's just about wishful thinking or it's just that like it's just about positive thinking and if you just think hard enough then you know you'll attract it and obviously that's not what it is at all it's about so much more than that but also I think that the term is now used in vocabulary in like such the wrong way yeah, like so everything it's else. like oh I manifested my handbag or like <laughs> <laughs> I'm manifesting my hot girl summer or you know I'm like huh uh-huh. like it's not used in the right way so I uh-huh. think just the meaning of it has got lost sure yeah. I think that some people can look at it as just wishing really hard yeah you know people want to feel like they're in the driver's seat of their life and that they're creating these things they didn't just like really wish really hard to be yeah, handed yeah. this from the universe yeah. so I see what you mean okay so there's so much information about manifesting and there's so much to know about it and actually if you listen to kind of all great speakers and thinkers like I was doing what I realized that everything they were talking about really fell under this manifesting umbrella so even if they weren't necessarily always using the word manifestation so many people like all things self-development related really kind of fell into this 
manifestation of Rella, which is like making your life what you want it to be and like changing your reality. Mm -hmm. And so almost kind of instinctively, I came up with these seven steps to manifesting that I felt explained everything that you need to know about manifestation. And basically, I first hosted a workshop in January 2020. And I was like, it was just, I had a really small community. And I was like, I've been doing this thing called manifesting. Do you guys want to know what it is? Like, should I do a workshop on it? And they were like, yeah. So I did. And I was like, well, how do I explain it? And but like when I say instinctively, I mean, I came up with these seven steps within about five minutes and just wrote it on the notes on my phone. And they've always stuck. They mm -hmm. like never changed. And I made this claim. I was like, everything you need to know about manifesting. And then I panicked because I was like, <laughs> shit. Then I, and then I would like tentatively like listen to other speakers and be like, Oh no, what if something doesn't fit in my seven steps? Yeah. But it did. Like really everything does fit into one of these seven steps. And this really is a practice that is at its core about self-worth and self-belief and empowerment and overcoming self-doubt and the inner critic and low self-worth and all the things that are holding us back. Mm -hmm. And then it's about taking action. It's about stepping outside your comfort zone. It's about being the person that you want to become. It's also about knowing how to turn your envy into inspiration, embracing gratitude, surrendering and trusting and letting go. It's such a full practice. I'm just so passionate about it. I love all that. I know. I Are we going to go through the seven steps? Can Do we you go want through? to? Yeah, yeah. of yeah. course. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So step one, which you guys have already nailed, is <laughs> be clear in your vision. So this okay. is really about being specific with your goals and your intentions. So I always say that kind of with this step, what you really require is two things. It's vulnerability and courage. Mm -hmm. You have to be quite vulnerable with yourself when you're looking at what you want your life to look like one year from now especially if it's going to be quite different from where you are now to be mm -hmm. able to say like these are my secret dreams or this are the things that actually in my life I really want to change but then you also need a lot of courage you need courage to dare to like dream big and to like really set ambitious and exciting goals that truly set your soul on fire mm -hmm. and within the book I share different techniques like vision boarding and like I give step-by-step -step guides and manifesting meditations which I still do all the time and there's loads of like amazing neuroscience behind the power of manifesting meditations and like visualization essentially and mm -hmm. how it primes your subconscious to reach those goals by filtering out unwanted information and seeking opportunity and seeing opportunity that is in line with those goals so it's really powerful practice so i want to say something about what you were saying yeah. her and i have been having conversations lately about like why we're not attracted to certain types of people anymore mm. and ashley specifically set out an intention that she wants to be in a relationship and the certain type of person that she's looking for and yesterday we were on the phone talking about just why certain people that are a little easier to date are not necessarily what we would go after because if you want like a partner that makes sense for you long term yeah. but i think that you do have to then forego what is easy for what you want and those mm -hmm. things are difficult you know mm -hmm. and i think that when you sort of have a clear vision it's easier to go after it but also harder because you have to just give up the things that were so easy the low-hanging fruit you know mm. right yeah 100 percent. and actually that fits so nicely into step four and i'll <laughs> right. explain but that's so I don't so get true okay step two is remove fear and doubt the secret of manifesting is that you manifest what you subconsciously believe you're worthy of receiving. So you can dream about the perfect partner all you want, but if you don't believe you're worthy of unconditional love, then it's a lot harder to receive. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of step of the process and the practice that really makes this a self-development practice. And the focus is so much on inner healing. And, you know, this comes in two parts and one half, you know, this is also about finding like therapists and counselors and healers that can help you on that journey. But it's also about reprogramming your subconscious beliefs that you have about yourself with like through little practices that you can do every day. And there's loads and loads in the book that I explained, but ways of changing your language and using affirmations. But this is like the hardest step for people to do, mm -hmm. but it's the most important. And it's an ongoing journey like you're always discovering new layers of yourself and finding self-love at a deeper layer and every time you do you open up abundance and you and you attract more abundance into your life step three is aligning your behavior so like i said this is the step that's about taking action stepping outside your comfort zone also it's about looking at the way you behave and treat yourself day to day because if we're manifesting what we believe are worthy of receiving you have to remember that everything you do is a reflection of your self-worth mm -hmm. so how you treat yourself how you move your body how you fuel it who you spend time with like everything matters and it's all a reflection how worthy do you really believe you are of joy love happiness and abundance
<laughs> so great. I mean, this is what you do for a living. But you just really just it's perfect. You just roll through it. It's so <laughs> well you. said. I just yeah. I think step two really hits me in the chest because it's like my mom's always said to me that I she doesn't use the term date down, but she says you seek out people that aren't necessarily on your level because you don't think you deserve it. And it always annoys me when she says that. But she is probably right. She at is right. core. <laughs> you are seeking out what you yeah. do think that you deserve. And mm-hmm. I think that on the service, of course, I think I deserve somebody wonderful and amazing and on my level in every category category that I want, but she's always told me I've sought people out. Mm. But it's interesting because what you think you're deserving of in your professional life, like you think you should be the top, top best in the world. So successful, you know, so it's like, Mm. I don't know the answer, but it's interesting that someone like you, for example, is like, I'm such a bad bitch. I should be rich and famous and successful Mm. and all this stuff. And it's not even a fake it till you make it. You truly believe that you've earned all this and you could get even more but yet mm. professionally I do. but then the, in the yeah. love life it's a good different it's fascinating that yeah. different parts of your life you have different self-worth or something definitely yeah I mean I'll tell you at every job I've ever had I walk in there I'm the best person there right. and yeah. I will crush it and I will outperform every person there you're right professionally so why don't we think that when we walk into like a room with like people to date that you're not the best person there and you deserve the best yeah, like, I, I don't, don't know, know it's I will walk into a room and I feel like I can talk to anybody but do I necessarily pick out the most successful man the most interesting I don't know. Mm. Hmm. Do well, I we, seek that person out? No, I probably seek out what's easy. Mm. Well, so we def- our self worth definitely changes in different categories okay. of our life. Okay. And actually, I wonder if you know if we feel like unworthy of like that unconditional love, we actually seek validation through other areas of our life. So then we like overperform at work mm. and we overperform our career to kind of compensate for the lack of worth that we feel in other areas Mm -hmm. it's a very like common story for women especially to feel very successful Mm. at work to really excel to strive hard to feel very confident when they walk into you know the boardroom or the office but to feel absolutely like they can't carry any of that confidence into a day Mm. or maybe they can carry the confidence but from a facade but deep down they don't feel that same self-worth that's interesting yeah so step three is is align your behavior. It's about the habits, about all of that. But it's also about stepping into the character of your future self. You know, who do you want to be and how can you become them through your daily action? Step four is overcome tests from the universe. So I say that on your way to manifesting anything, you will be shown tests from the universe, which basically say how worthy do you really think you are. And the easiest way to describe it is through dating. So if you are, you know, you want to meet someone you know, your perfect partner. And then you start, let's say you go on a first date and the date is amazing and the chemistry is fire. And you're like, oh my God, Roxy was right. This happened so quickly. Like he (laughs) is sent from the universe and then you don't hear from them. And then five days later, it's like, hey, what's up? This is a test. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What's going to happen? And the test is like, how worthy do you really think you are? Are you going to continue with someone who clearly, and I'm sorry, five days is five days too long. That's crazy to me. I want to hear from you on my way home. Yeah. Did you get home okay? How much did you enjoy being with me? (laughs) See, Raina, you are worthy of that. (laughs) Exactly. You know it. I think I give good date. I think I'm fun. (laughs) I mean, there's a reason why I seek out so many people that are ridiculous for me. There has to be at the. I know we thought we fixed you when we did it. (laughs) (laughs) I I put in so much work, so many long car ride conversations for what? (laughs) I have sought out better people as this podcast is aged. I've aged, but yeah, there's a reason why I seek out people that are maybe a little ridiculous for me geographically or age wise or professionally. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it doesn't take a psychotherapist for me to know that. Yeah. Anyway, so the test is basically, are you able to walk away from the things that aren't worthy of you or do you stay kind of like in them because you don't really trust that what's worthy of you is coming? And another example might be Mm. like, and I always say that when you're about to meet the one, exes always will pop into your life because exes always come with this like tempting, like familiarity even though you know they aren't right for you and it's like do you entertain it keep the door a bit open or are you able to truly have closure personally I don't believe in closure it's like I need to just see them one last time no <laughs> just have sex with them one last time for closure you don't yeah. like, closure comes from with it yeah like be honest with yourself yeah. you can want to have sex with them but it's yes. not about the closure okay. it's just exactly. about the potential <laughs> orgasm <laughs> and cuddling if you're into that if you're into that 
if you're into that closeness you yeah. know like you want that intimacy be honest with yourself so if an ex comes into your life and you know that they're not right for you it's about your ability to really stay strong through that. But basically, Test from the Universe is looking for anything that asks you to settle for less than you deserve. So mm -hmm. this could be toxic friendships, jobs that you don't like, you know, whatever it is. And even settling within yourself with your bad habits or, you know, the things that are keeping you stuck where you are. Mm -hmm. And so this is really about, like, not settling and creating energetic space for what's right for you to enter. Because our time and energy are really valuable assets assets they're not limitless you know we have only a, a certain amount and so we need to make that space but for me the step is also about how well you're able just to overcome obstacles and rejection and you know manifesting isn't that you just learn to manifest and then life is perfect you're still going to have shit days rejection stressful situations mm -hmm. you know low points maybe some rock bottoms but how you're able to show up to them and how able you are to see value in them and learn from them is actually what makes the difference going forward are you like can you persist through the challenges or do you let them deter you and set you back and so for me this is why it's my favorite step so whenever I go through like a rough patch what doesn't happen now is that I become hopeless and I mm -hmm. think this is who I am. I'm so unlucky. Things are never going to be good for me. I know that there's an up level on the other side. And that for me is what optimism is. It's not feeling good every day. It's that even on the bad days, you know, better days are coming. Mm -hmm. So this is like my favorite step. Step five is embrace gratitude without caveat. So gratitude has this really high vibrational frequency. And my mom used to say to me this phrase in Arabic, which literally translates to, for every thanks you give, you get a thousand in return. And there's kind of no better way to explain this step. But the more grateful we are for all that we already have, the more things that life will give us to be grateful for. Mm. And when we sit in this true state of appreciation, by the law of attraction, we attract more good things back to our lives. And for me... I give so many practices in this book of how to retrain your brain to be more positive because a lot of us need training for that. Like I was the most negative person, like half glass empty. I was not brought up taught how to be happy. And I absolutely retrained my whole way of thinking so that now I always sit in this place of gratitude and it's effortless and it's with the practices that I share in the book. Can we talk a little bit about it? Because I think that happiness is such a mindset shift and I think you'll meet people. Ashley and I always say like everything really seems to turn out well for us, but mm. I think that's because Ashley and I can pivot. We can be happy yeah. with multiple outcomes. We trust each other to make different decisions to sort of elevate what we have going on. Like, And I think you hear other people just say like everything goes wrong for me. Of yeah, course yeah. me, obviously yeah. me, you know, so how do you get out of that well a lot of it is about changing the way that you speak to yourself and the language that you use because our subconscious can't differentiate a truth from a lie so everything that you're saying it's mm -hmm. believing to be true so if you are going around saying I'm so unlucky bad things always happen to me then your brain will look for things to support that mm -hmm. belief like our belief system becomes the filter through which we view everything. And a belief is just a thought that's been repeated so many times that it becomes so. So if you keep saying, I'm so unlucky, I'm so unworthy, good things don't happen, you will believe that. And then that belief system will influence your actual reality, not only how you perceive it, but what you actually, you know, attract. Whereas if you keep saying to yourself, and even if at first you don't believe it, affirmations like, I am worthy, good things happen to me, you know, I'm so excited for what's coming, there's always opportunities, whatever. If you use, change that language, then you start to change what you believe and what you attract. Mm -hmm. And so for me, having like a daily gratitude practice, like if people did nothing else, I have one exercise in there called a positivity journal. And I always say like, if people just ignored everything else I said, I hope they don't, but if they did, and they just did this positivity journal for two weeks, they would see a shift in their lives, like mm -hmm. a great shift. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the best thing that we can do for ourselves. I mean, Dr. Joe Dispenza did this amazing experiment where he found that if people 
practice gratitude three times a day for four days in a row, their immune system strengthened by 50%. So it's like the power oh of goodness. gratitude yeah. is not just on our mindset, but actually on our physiology. It's so good for our health, our well-being. There's so many studies on the positive effects it has on sleep and depression and anxiety. So it's a really important step. You know, manifesting isn't just about more, more, more. It's about making the life that you already have feel as good as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of this person I know who always says like everything bad happens to her. And of course me. And of course, you know, I'm the most unlucky person. It's sort of like her whole personality, right. her yeah, whole brand yeah. and everything that happens, whether it's a breakup or maybe a fault at work. She's like, of course this happened to me. And I look at her life and I think the same amount of bad stuff happens mm. to you as everybody else else in the world. I want to also like just validate that some people truly are depressed and that's how your mind works. And yeah. it's not so easy to just decide to be happy, of course, of course, because your brain is not allowing you to be like that. So I want to validate that. But mm-hmm. I always think like if you would just take a moment, like why not just be sort of happy for the apartment you live in and the job you get to mm-hmm. have and to work for yourself and how beautiful you are and you wouldn't feel like this all the time. Yeah. And a lot of it is also perspective. Not to say like other people have it a lot worse, but like Nedra Tawab, who we love, was just like gratitude is not always the answer. It's like bad things happen. You're allowed to like yeah, yeah. Feel those things, totally. you know. You're like you should be grateful for what you do have. Like yeah, that's yeah. what I'm not yeah, right either. now. So right. I don't have like to tell we're you. all allowed to Agreed. have those moments. But <laughs> if you really can always be like, I am lucky to be alive and yeah, yeah. like have an able body or whatever it is, or have this relationship or have this home, a roof above my head. Mm-hmm. You know, anyone listening to this podcast right now <laughs> has something going for them yeah, yeah. that you can like focus on totally. rather than hone in on the negative. I think about my engagement ending. It's the worst fucking breakup story I've ever heard in my goddamn life. Mm-hmm. It's insane. It's so bad. He told me the morning of our engagement party he didn't love me anymore and I had to go to it. And then he left me the next day. And you had to I, go to it. I, we had to go to the party. It was really bad. Oh, I'm I so could, sorry. Thank you. I'm fine now. But thank you. I could use that though as evidence that things aren't going to work out. Yeah, and yeah. I can use that as evidence that nobody, even if they tell me they really love me and they're going to be there for me and they proposed to me, are going to leave me. And I just choose not to. I think that mm-hmm. people really did back then have a lot of questions of like, how could you ever date after that? And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know. I just do. Yeah. Everybody gets broken up with. Right. Oh my like, God. Like, yeah, yeah, this is harsh, totally. but like, everybody's gone through it. Yeah. yeah. And I looked at my parents and I thought, my parents have been through hell and back. They've been through divorce and they didn't die. Mm-hmm. The pain didn't kill them. So I know it'll be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I also think that through breakups, like you never evolve more as a person than through a breakup. I think it's almost like the greatest thing that can ever happen to you is heartbreak. Yeah. Because you transform, like you flourish. So usually when people tell me they've broken up with someone, I'm like, congratulations. Totally. (laughs) Like you're able to create. I mean, I love the quote that's take your broken heart and turn it into art. Like I, oh, just, I love that quote. I've like not the best it. music we have, yeah. the best podcasts, <laughs> like the best things come from <laughs> so true. particularly women yeah. going through a breakup, really, <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> so true. It is really so true. I was talking to a girlfriend of Mars yesterday who was going through a pretty bad breakup and I was giving her some advice that Ashley and I have and it was like bombs going off in her head and I was like, this behavior is abusive. It's not okay. And she was like, mm. I never thought about it like that. And I was like, this mm. is emotional abuse. This is not acceptable. And I could see her digesting it and hopefully taking it into the next relationship and being able to like set clearer boundaries and take care of Definitely. herself better and just pick people that won't do this so you're not two years down the road going how did I get here yeah I mean you just look at women like I feel like I can sense it when a friend or any woman is going through a breakup and I'm like she's gonna thrive just give her like yeah. when she kind of gets <laughs> so over true. the like yeah. physical pain of the yeah. heartbreak she is gonna crush it yeah. just, like feel yeah, it yeah I know it's so true it's so true. Step six is turn envy into inspiration. Okay, I love this. So envy is a really low vibrational emotion mm-hmm. which comes from this place of fear. It says that you have something and that means there's less for me. So it comes from a scarcity mindset mm-hmm. that there's not enough for us to go around. And envy comes from, you know, it comes from wounds unhealed, you know, and it comes from a place of lack. And we can use envy. We can actually use envy to show us what we want and what still needs healing. But the problem is, is that often people, they deny when they feel envious and they pass it on as judgment instead. Mm. So let's say that you're scrolling through Instagram or TikTok and you see someone like, I don't know, dancing in their kitchen and you are go to be like oh that's so cringe okay that is judgment Mm -hmm. okay and could that judgment really be envy that this person is able to express themselves so unapologetically and authentically and would you maybe like to be able to do that yourself sometimes it's just cringe though (laughs) (laughs) sometimes 
<laughs> it's I have be, to speak my truth. <laughs> sometimes it's cringe, but do you I, need I to judge it? You're right. I'm like, wrong, but I so we, I, we no, I love like, the sentiment. You're it's a, absolutely accurate, but like I do have to say <laughs> I really like to talk some shit. I do. You're so, exactly right. Sometimes you're like, why am I feeling so negatively about this thing? And your base emotion could be jealousy. We yeah. talked about during COVID, during the quarantine, and everybody yes. was just like teaching workout routines, mm. teaching baking, teaching cooking. And so many people were talking shit Shut, on those yes. people. Mm. And I remember Ashley and I were just like, why can't you just like hype that person? Think it's fucking cool or yeah. keep it moving. Yeah. Just keep it moving. Like, just swipe on. Yeah. Like, I just, I really do believe in, like, look, I know that everybody's going to have a bitch every now and then, and, like, we are going to judge sometimes, but I think where we can, like, check our judgment. Totally. Because also, when we're judging other people, we're also believing that other people are judging us. Mm -hmm. So we also inadvertently make ourselves feel more self-conscious. Whereas if we can, you know, really check when we're judging someone, be like, actually, why do I care? Like, let me just keep yeah. moving. And then actually we're going to worry less what other people are thinking and saying about us because we're not doing it ourselves. Yes. I mean, I said this to Raina the other day. We were talking about this person we know. It's a person that's on a TV show and she was getting a lot of hate on the internet. And I was like, the envy is palpable. Like, yeah. it's jealousy in its mm -hmm. purest form. I can feel it. And the things people are saying like aren't even really true. They're just so jealous. And I can yeah. like feel it coming through in these comments. Mm -hmm. And I can absolutely be swiping and be like, oh, that's cringe. But yeah. when people are commenting, it's jealousy because yeah, they, yeah. they want to post something and have other people like it mm. and say something mean yeah. and get some sort of rush from that. So much of it is rooted in that. Absolutely. I truly believe that. When yeah. you have that urge to write the thing publicly, mm. when someone's having fun, yeah. not even someone saying something controversial or that is worthy of any sort yeah, of yeah, judgment. Totally. It's just like someone's just dancing in the kitchen, like you said. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you feel the need to be like, that's so cringe. It's like, you're so yeah. mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're so jealous. I love what you like. Just hit the pause button and say to yourself, like, why do I care? Yeah. Yeah. I actually never clap back at anybody and Ashley and I have a pretty easy our audience is wonderful uh, we don't really get a lot of trolls but this one girl one time said that like I dressed really ugly that day and I commented back at her I said who the fuck asked you and <laughs> she good. took the comment down and messaged me right away it was like I really need to self reflect I can't believe I did that oh, why would I write something like that and I was like Aww. I do find that a lot with like when we don't look like haters but like yeah. when somebody does that like that is somebody at their core that is just trying to ruin your day because their day is bad yeah. and that is the only reason to do something so mean like that on mm. the internet to somebody mm -hmm. yeah and I also just love what you just said of like if you stop doing that it'll stop happening to you mm. when it comes to like the judgment yeah and stuff yeah and look we all feel envious like day to day I think Instagram like makes that like happen yeah. but also like we could be jealous let's say we want to meet someone and our best friend gets engaged like we are so happy for them but at the same time there's this pang of like oh why not me? I yeah, yeah, I want it. And so we can just use that to like show us, like I say, what needs healing, what we still want. And then we can turn it into inspiration. So inspiration is the antithesis of envy. It says you have it and I can have it too. Mm -hmm. And so we can look to people's success and happiness and joy and love that they have and allow it to show us that it's possible. And so it's like really about getting into this habit of celebrating other people mm -hmm. because that is like such a demonstration to the universe. I believe I can have it too. Like when we actually actively celebrate and are happy for other people's happiness, we show that we're not threatened by it. And that comes from a really abundant mindset. And mm -hmm. I believe it keeps us attracting good things back to us. Absolutely. And in an industry like ours, it's like when you see someone make it in this field, it should be an inspiration like that you're even seeing that, that they're in your orbit and Definitely. good things are happening to them. Like to me, it's like all these amazing things happen to people I'm friends with or people I know and that means that I'm surrounding myself with people who are doing awesome stuff. Yeah, you know, exactly. like that should be kind of exactly. the mindset as opposed to like, they got that. That means I'm not going to get it. Yes, exactly. And also, by the way, I don't say any of this coming from this place of like, I'm never jealous or I'm not, this. Totally. Like, yeah. you know, not at all. It's just that, human. Like, We're human. I have the tools. Like I have a, like a friend, like someone that was a really good friend of mine. And then she just kind of like, wasn't really very nice. Um, but she's like killing it. Like she's doing amazing. And sometimes I catch myself getting this pang mm -hmm. and I have to check myself and be like, Hey, you know what? I'm fucking happy for her. Like good for her. We're all thriving. Like, but so I, I just have the tools now to see how I can turn it into inspiration. And that's the thing is it's not denying yourself of emotions. Like envy will come up. 
but how what do you do with it how can you change that energy of it into something that's going to push you forward rather than hold you back Mm -hmm. And also like you can mute people or get off Instagram or follow, like I mute you everyone. Have to subject yourself to something <laughs> yes. that's making you feel a certain way. Like Definitely. we say that all the time. I mean, if you're struggling with even like body image, it's not probably serving you to see a bunch of models in your 100%. feed or if you're struggling with fertility and someone with their new baby is triggering, yeah. just mute it. Like we don't have to be subjecting ourselves to yeah. stuff that feels bad at the same time, still having those tools that yeah. you speak of. I 100%. Totally and agree. I think if you look at somebody professionally as a good example, where you just like, you're so jealous of what they have going on. What I like to do is actually like look at that content and say to myself, what are they doing? Right. Yeah. What do people like about exactly. what they're doing? How can I emulate that? How can I do a better job at that? And I think that all the time in podcasting because there's so many female podcasters and rather than hating on them Ashley and I are friends with them we bring them on our show we collab with them we promote everything they're doing and I like that way of being and Definitely. I'm we're not stealing ideas from people I'm looking at what people enjoy and they like and they did well and mm -hmm. thinking how can I also do well well and compliment them like I get those feelings I get those pangs and I'm just like that was so awesome like tell them you know and that comes from Nikki Glazer too she's very open about that and she's a comedian we've had her on the show a few times and a friend and She's just like, I get jealous. Like I see women that are, they're so funny and they're killing it and she's fucking killing it, but she still gets like that. Mm. And she's super open about it. And she was like, when I feel that need to feel jealous, like I want that, I send them a message or compliment them or promote their stuff. Like yeah. I turn my negative energy into positive and put exactly. more of that out into the universe. And then it comes back to you. And yeah. I just love that. So, I've always said that about her too. Yeah, she she's... came on our show and she hyped us so hard and promoted Aww. us. And I couldn't believe somebody that was like really on the rise like that would take the time to promote us so hard. I know. And when you've gotten to a place where you're in the public or you do something like we do or like you do and post something that your immediate reaction is like, is someone going to like hate on this in some way? Mm -hmm. And we have it really good. The people that follow us and our audience is so amazing, but it's always so impressive to me when people really hype you and they yeah. really are like, this inspired me instead mm -hmm. of like, I'm jealous and you're cringe or you're bragging. It's like, I love to see you doing this thing, living your best life, going mm -hmm. on this vacation, buying this car. And I'm inspired to do the same. And I'm like, damn, that's awesome. Like yeah. you will get it because yeah. of your energy. Yeah. Uh -huh. The people that are out here are just like, oh, you're doing this again. <laughs> yeah, like whatever. It's like, you're not going to get it because yeah. you're putting the wrong energy into the world. You guys so are right. natural manifestors. <laughs> I feel like you guys have got this already. Well, you don't need to read them. We're very inspired by people around us. <laughs> this is the secret. One of the originals like the old school book like um, I feel like my mom got real boned up about the secret early I do too on. I have she a secret like, upstairs <laughs> I think the secret is much more focused just on the law of attraction. And I would law say it's much more about positive thinking. Okay. okay. So it was an amazing introduction right, to it. it. Like but I think also it was like so different back then. Totally. That was very much about like, how can you manifest a new car? And like <laughs> very much about the material things. Oh, was it? Okay. Whereas yeah. I think now it's like more about the... I just remember practice. like those early days like of stuff. Not that it was that old, but I just remember my mom being like... This law of attraction thing is so cool. You know, it's like, uh -huh. yeah, when but it the is. first time you've heard it. Yeah, you know, but it is. Uh -huh. Yeah. I just remember my dad coming home and being like, so I've been hearing that like sugar is worse for you than fat. Like, I just remember like some of those little <laughs> things that came out when we were younger and you're like, whoa. <laughs> so true. Anyway, so true. I had this really nice moment yesterday. Well, I'll share it on the podcast. I told Ashley. So I, I reached out to this girl and it's Crystal Williams. She's the co-host of Almost 30 Podcast who we've had on the show. And Ashley and I were doing a cute little summer mailer for Vibes Only. So what we wanted to send her a gift and I just asked for her address and she gave it to me and she said, thank you. And then she sent me a voice memo and she was just like, I'm so proud of what you girls are doing. Aww. And I'm hard you work and it's just amazing and it's probably she sent me the kindest message about Ashley and I and it just like made my day she didn't have to do that she didn't have to hype us like that mm. it just meant so much to me and it made oh. me want to do that for other people yeah. too yeah. I'm like very inspired by people that are like that because she could have just accepted the gift and said thank you and I wouldn't mm. have thought anything of it that's so yeah, I, I feel like everyone listening should just like pause and just send a nice message to someone yeah well i say well done to yeah someone. absolutely i'm proud of you bitch that's what we say <laughs> well i think it's diane von furstenberg and her thing is that every morning she starts a day and does something for somebody like a favor a connection introducing two people via email she starts her day with helping someone in some way I love and i guess that could also boil down to just giving someone like a really nice compliment or praise but yeah I just love that. Why else do you get to a level of like such success and mm -hmm. such influence and power if you can't help other people? Oh my God, of course. Well, I think we're all here to be of service to others. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what we're doing or what career we're in, not just people in self-help, like 
whether you are podcasters or entertainers or we're all of service of others mm -hmm. like and that's what should be I think all of our intention behind everything because we're not here alone we're here to like help each other be better feel better happier you know yeah mm -hmm. if you've been lucky enough to get things you should give back mm. not just take 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 exactly all right what's the final step so the final step is <laughs> I love uh, this. step seven trust in the universe and this is really all about surrender it's about letting go and it's about trusting that you don't know how but you just know that it will all work out the way it's supposed to and I think one kind of mistake that people make when they're manifesting is they try to kind of desperately control exactly how it's going to happen mm -hmm. and they become like exactly that they have this like desperate energy which really keeps them from receiving and I think the kind of like gold dust on manifesting is knowing what you want and then letting it go if you know what you want you have your clear goals and you work on your inner healing you take action you're aligning your behavior you're persisting through challenges you're not settling you're embracing gratitude you're turning envy into inspiration and you know that by doing all those things, the things that you want will come to you. But it is absolutely this unwavering confidence and this absolute surrender to the process. And I always ask people, like, look for synchronicities in your life. Look for coincidences. Let them show you that the universe is always listening to everything that you're doing. To me, there's like control in that surrender by saying to yourself, like, I've taken all the steps. I put the building blocks down and I can be happy with a bunch of different outcomes because I know that I've like worked towards this. Yeah. That to me is like surrendering, yeah. you know? Also, masturbate. <laughs> we say manifestation, masturbation. That's your body letting go. You should say your manifestations and your goals as you come. It sounds funny, but I'm being dead serious. I, I manifested our sex toy company. <laughs> While you were masturbating. I was always doing that. That's what I, I think about money. I sex toy company because I used to use my fingers all the time just to masturbate. You can still do it manually. I do both. I go back Acoustic. and forth. Anyway, it's, we don't have to go down this road with you, Roxy, but I'm just saying that it is a great way to let go and also just... <laughs> Just, Kelly talks about this. In our app, there's a video. She's not masturbating, but talking about that's, that's where this is do. kind of like a bodily surrender too. Mm. Anyway, it's kind of niche. No, I like it. I love you. <laughs> Whatever makes you feel good. Roxy's like, um, anyway. So like, I'm British. I'm a bit more prude. I'm like, oh my goodness. Wow. We're well, going there. Okay. Well, we have a vibrator but now for you. You guys, so. you guys do you. And, and you know, whatever helps you to surrender, I'm here for. Okay, great. You co-sign. <laughs> we were going to talk to you about like, how do we apply this to career or like, I want a relationship or I want to find a hobby, but I feel like it's very applicable yeah, you just go through the, in all yeah. these yeah. steps and exactly. saying like, this is what I want. This is what I deserve this is what I desire and let me go do those things to find it exactly and then are you of the belief of also be kind to yourself and be gentle and if you fuck up one day and you do oh something God, that didn't course. fit in the perfect seven steps you can forgive yourself and start fresh oh again God, of course like I know? say this is a life practice yeah like, you live and breathe this stuff mm -hmm. and you know there's a whole chapter in here just about self-love mm -hmm. and self-love I say is the driving force behind all of this mm -hmm. so yeah of course it, it's about you know, accepting that every day is different and honoring where you're at. I always say that self-love is a balance of honoring where you're at today and where you want to be tomorrow and finding that balance between both. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is definitely not about being a perfect person or doing things mm -hmm. perfectly. It doesn't exist. It's about embracing all the highs and lows, but having tools to help you navigate them better. Mm -hmm. I, I love, love that. that. Well, I feel like we covered everything. Amazing. Yeah, I can't wait to amount of time. I'm really yeah. excited to Me like too. dive into this book and Aww. learn how to self love myself. Yeah, <laughs> it's also like myself. such an easy read. Like you'll read yeah. it in a day. It's mm -hmm. so oh, yeah. easy. It's so accessible. I love the color. It's not yeah. dense. Yeah. You know, like I didn't like how sometimes if I'm reading a self help book, I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Like if it's too dense, it just makes me tired at night. But this is yeah. a really easy read. So it's for everyone. And Sometimes, it's like the way it's laid out. It's broken up. You have some little boxes here, some pull quotes. It's like a fun read. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some exercises to fill out in between as well. I just pulled up this thing that says practice visualization. I'm like really big on this and closing your eyes and like visualizing good things coming to you. And like Kelly has said, picture like a bright light, you know, like coming into your body or whatever you want to do. And then picturing things that are getting in the way, yeah. you know, like things that are literally physically blocking all this stuff from like rushing in to your life so yeah 
Thank Amazing. Thank, thank you so much, it. girls. Thank you so it's much. And thank so you for amazing. having such beautiful, actionable steps. Because I think mm-hmm. sometimes you hear these words strung together and they're just buzzwords. And I sometimes <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that didn't mean anything. And <laughs> yeah. This to me. What did she just say? Yeah. <laughs> this to me is really actionable oh, and um, implementable. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your story also Thank of you. kind of where you got to and your struggles and everything that's brought you to where you are today. Yeah. So, so tell everybody where they can find your Instagram, your website, which I was on this morning, your books, everything. So my Instagram is just at Roxy Nafusi with an IE. And this book, Manifest, Seven Steps Living Your Best Life is available on Amazon, but also Barnes & Noble and okay. all major bookstores. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much for doing this. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And you know where to find us, girlsgottoeat.com for tour tickets for the fall tour and all of our episodes, Girls Gotta Eat podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I am Ash Hess. Raina is Raina.Greenberg. And of course, our company, Vibes Only, where you can get a vibrator and manifest and masturbate, (laughs) Uh, vibesonly.com, Vibes Only on Instagram. And subscribe to YouTube, tell a friend, share this episode, live your best life. We'll see you next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye. 